Esports next and Singapore sent a 20 member squad for the sports debut of the SEA Games. They competed across uh, six games, mm. three different platforms. We finished with one silver and one bronze. Uh, Bunyi, comfortable result you think for a game's debut? I think, yeah, for a game's debut for a very new sport, um, it was very hard for us to benchmark and set any expectation. Mm. Uh, and there's so many different different kind of uh, games uh, that, that could potentially be included in future competition. Mm. Um, yeah, so any, any medal I think would be be good and they, they, did, they did bring back some medals mm. uh, and I think more importantly the, the e-sport athlete uh, had a good experience of what it means to represent the, our country in a major sport a major sporting event like yeah. the SEA Games I think it was a good uh, good education process for them as well and the fact that the SEA Games Federation was the first to introduce e-sports I believe yeah. next year it might be a demo sport at the Asian Games and who knows at the Olympics you know yeah. down well, it already was, it was it demo was, oh, right, oh. The, the last Asian Games in 2018. Oh, so, so oh, it yeah, might demo actually be a, the Olympic Games. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so exactly. actually, the next step would be uh, to include in Sea Games 21, and possibly mm. be a full medal sport in Asian Games 2022. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and from new sports uh, to the traditional ones like athletics, swimming, cycling, fencing, bowling, and others. Uh, Richard, let's touch on track and field. They came back with three bronze medals. The sport has close to 50 gold medals on offer. So briefly, Richard, why aren't we able to produce more medal-winning athletes in track and field? Okay, so I, I made reference to this in the, uh, in the, the post-games report that we did with SNOC. Yeah. Um, I think that athletics have uh, to get their act together uh, in terms of they, there's a lot of infighting. And this is not just a recent thing. This has been going on for a number of years. Uh, it, it's just a distraction and what it's doing is it's taking attention away from where they need to put their focus which is very much upon the athlete pathway it's interesting we've got a number of young emerging uh, junior athletes uh, if you look in 20 across 2019 performed well at Asian level you know we've got Asian gold medalists mm. Asian junior gold medalists mm -hmm. and we've got uh, athletes who went to qualified for Youth Olympics uh, Campton and the uh, high jump uh, we've got some pretty good talent and potential coming through mm. so let's focus on that let's mm. stop fighting I've had a number of um, messages of support uh, for the comments that I made uh, after the games um, and from very different quarters and what strikes me more than anything else there's more that unites us than divides us so we've got to focus on that Mm. What are the bits that we love doing? What are the bits that we need to do? And where are the gaps? Let's focus on that in terms of you know, a daily training environment that encourages the athletes to continue to develop beyond their junior years into senior uh, athletics. Uh, looking at helping to plan young athletes as they go through their education, as they go through national service or for their males, mm. and making sure that they get into an environment and they get the right quality of coaching that can take them to the levels that they aspire to. Mm. And that I know that they aspire to do well at the Asian uh, world and Olympic level. Do you know, we, we haven't had a qualifier for Olympic Games for some time. We rely upon wild, wild cards, cards. Yeah. right? So let's, let's turn it around. Let's look at the things that unite us and focus on that. Let's focus on our strengths instead of focusing on our weaknesses. Okay. I, think, I think there's way, way too much attention on the bits that divide us and the bits where we end up squabbling over. Okay. This call for unity, I want to make clear, is not just to the NSA leadership, it's to the entire track and field fraternity, yeah. Yeah. right? Down to the last person, the young athletes, the coaches, I think everybody needs to come together, right? And um, set our sights on to the key of the sport, which is what we love, right? right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, if, even following some of those comments that. Richard May was right, right, uh, widely reported. Yeah. Um, some of those comments are basically conti continuing with the trend of, I would say, infighting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it I mean, I, 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 I had communication with uh, um, the president. Wang Fei. Yeah, Wang Fei. Yeah. Uh, following, following those, and I, I think we agree that the NSA takes needs to take leadership uh, to um, harness the, the energy. But at the same time, everybody needs to play a part. And this is not just down to the management committee in SA mm. to, to get this right. Yeah. 
I mean, I take I take it very positively that the NSA is saying, yeah, we've 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 got a problem, and we need to do something about it. Yeah. The challenge now for them is how, mm. and what are they going to do? Mm. Okay, I think they've done they've taken a. a, a a fairly bold step in acknowledging that they do have a problem. Yeah. I think that's part of the uh, part of the longer term solution. Yeah. Now it's what are they going to do and how are they going to go about it to to pull the fraternities together yeah. because there's a lot of potential there. And I think I read, uh, I believe it was Gary Yeo who's won who's won five silver medals uh, as a sprinter for 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 Singapore, and I believe he's part of the executive committee. And he said, uh, I think as an NSA we should be receptive and be open to criticism because that's the only way that we can move forward instead of you know hiding and, uh, and, and I'm encouraged by that yeah I think it's uh, it's important to acknowledge and let's let's move forward sure yeah so, and um, let's touch on fencing Richard their hall of 13 medals which includes four gold would you say their NSA is on the right track in terms of governance youth development programs and uh, good coaches I think fencing fencing had a great games um, I think the difference between 2019 and 2017 mm. is that we had team events mm -mm. in 20, 2019. Mm. Uh, we have a great strength in the team events, so we knew that they were going to do well. Uh, their medal hall was fairly similar mm. to that of 2015 when they had the full suite of events. So um, my, my perspective is that they've, kind of, they've moved on a little bit from 2015, but the challenge, and I would throw down the challenge to the NSA, is how are you now going to translate that mm. to Asian level, world level, and Olympic level? You know, we don't have an Olympic qualifier yet. We know that Amita is pursuing that, uh, and she's probably our best chance at, at becoming an Olympic qualifier. Mm. We know that they've had uh, one or two breakthrough performances in 2014 uh, in, in men's epe, where they won a medal at Asian Games. Uh, the women's foil team won a medal bronze medal at the Asian Games. That's great. So they've had a little taste of what it, they can do mm. at Asian level. Now can they break into Asian level in a similar way to what they've done at Sea Games? Mm. Now there are some real powerhouses and if they can break in, you know, in Japanese, South Koreans, uh, Chinese, if they can break in, then we know that they, it's only a very short step to the world level. Mm. So um, we're, we're encouraged, but we want to challenge them further. What are you going to do that's going to take you to the next level? Mm. And that's the message, not just for fencing, but across the board, is if you're successful at Southeast Asian level, what are you going to do to try and translate that mm. into Asian level and at world level? Uh, where do you sit and where does your sport sit at those levels? Because that's where we aim to aspire. Okay. Now, similar to fencing, Bunji, uh, what is your take on our 10 pin bowlers? especially the women uh, who won three gold out of their eight overall medals. Our women's team is world class. Yeah. And I think they, they did it against very keen competition, from, particularly from the Malaysians. Yeah. And uh, I think what made the difference was their mental fortitude. All right. um, I was there at some of the games and um, it was, it was uh, an interesting environment. Um, yeah. and, and the, the fans made it interesting. Yes, yeah, the fans, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, so kudos to the team. Uh, they, 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 they held their heads up and uh, continued and persevered and uh, brought home the, the medals. Yeah. Um, the, the, the men's team uh, uh, have been improving and uh, they're still a young team. And, I, and at the same time, I think they, they carried themselves well at the SEA Games as well. Yeah. Uh, I think for the women, it was, and they clearly said this on social media, it was all about redemption mm. the fact that they've lost to Malaysia twice over the last two years mm -hmm. and this time they finally beat them so for them it's a celebration to Jerry's go who won uh, the bronze in in the masters so kudos to him he's going to national service so we'll see you back you know in time for 2021 for the sea games good luck Jerry's um, from 10 pin bowling Bunyi, to lawn bowling we saw their first gold medal in 20 years in the women's triple team event we mm. also witnessed Peter Gilchrist maintaining his gold medal winning streak from 2009 till the current games as he won his sixth straight men's singles goal in English billiards. Uh, before we hear from you, let's hear from the six time world champion who spoke to us right after his semi final win. Here's Peter Gilchrist. 
Yeah, he's a great player, uh, Nate Wu from uh, me and my, he's the current Asian billiards champion. Uh, I played him in the semi-final last year, uh, two years ago, sorry, in Kel. Um, I managed to I managed to beat him that time. But I've been watching him, you know, I've been watching my opponents while I've been here. And um, I, I feel I feel as I'm obviously, you know, I've had a really good year um, coming into this as world champion. I've, I carry a lot of confidence with me and, and I feel really good, you know. So if someone beats me, then I'll shake the hand and say, great stuff, you know, you've played fantastic because I'm playing as good as I can. Right. Well, it was really good uh, in Kale because uh, we'd already got two gold medals before I come to play, you know, so I felt really relaxed this time. Uh, we were so unlucky in the uh, men's doubles yeah. nine ball, uh, Tolly and Han and uh, Aloysius Yap. That was just, you just couldn't believe that look. They, they had no look at all. They go 8 0 down, it could have been 4 uh, 4. But they made a great comeback. And um, But that's what, you know, Q Spots is all about that. You know, it's just a, a bit of luck uh, here and there. Um, you know, the, they've, they've all done really well. You know, our our ladies uh, pull team, they're in the uh, semis now. We've got uh, Tommy Tommy Ang left as well, Alter Aloysius and Han. We, We've got a good squad here, um, and okay, I'm maybe he's, you know, I'm the one who everyone says, oh yeah, he'll get the gold, um, but it's not like that. All the all the rest, of, we've got we've got a good squad. So Bunyi, what can you say about Peter, who was carrying the weight of the team's expectations of their first gold medal, mm -hmm. especially since his fellow squad members weren't able to win in their earlier events? That's right. Uh, I think we will have expected nothing less from Peter, <laughs> yeah. reigning world champion, and um, yeah. uh, there was no doubt at, at any point in time in our mind that uh, he wouldn't be able to do that mm. job. But it says a lot for consistency, yeah. uh, perseverance, mm. and I think he has uh, anchored himself as really the, the kingpin uh, in, in this sport, in this event, right. uh, not just in the region, but actually in the world. Yeah, six-time SEA Games gold medalist, six-time current world champion as well. Brilliant job, uh, Peter. Uh, and looking at our shooters, uh, for the first time since 1991, Bunyi, no gold medals to show for. First time since 91. And it's a relatively young squad uh, who medaled one silver and four bronze. Do you reckon the Singapore Shooting Association is using these games to blood new talents like Ho Siu Yi and Adele Tan? Well, um, first of all, um, again, the events are quite different. Our traditional strength is in um, rifle. Three P's and so our 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 best shooters in those uh, events uh, were not were not in the in the Philippines. Mm. But at the same time, I think uh, there's enough depth in the in the team. So some of the so indeed, I think um, uh, having the younger shooters there uh, would have been have, have been uh, given them an opportunity to gain their major games experience. Mm. Okay, all right then. We're done to our final lifts of sports, uh, which includes golf, wakeboarding, triathlon, s uh, skateboarding, beach handball, chess traditional boat racing, archery, gymnastics, open water swimming, and from this whole group, guys, uh, Richard, the one I believe which probably stands out the most is the first medal in golf in 30 years, the singles. I mean, James Liao, on his games debut, won the individual men's event, the 22-year-old, yeah. then teamed up uh, to also win the silver. So, Richard, is this a starting point for the sport of golf in Singapore uh, to excel in future games? Um, no, I don't think it's a starting point. I think uh, golf has been pretty consistent over the last three SEA Games. Mm. So uh, we picked up a couple of silvers uh, in 2015. Uh, in 2017, uh, the men's team won, and uh, the men's uh, individual, we got a silver. Mm. Uh, this time it flipped, so uh, the men's individual, uh, we got a gold, mm. and the team got silver. Uh, what's significant about this is uh, each of the C games throws up a different set of players. Uh, so the renewal uh, and the freshness of the team mm -hmm. is exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, we have this interplay between amateur and professional. Uh, what point is the best point for amateurs to, to turn professional? Mm -hmm. um, there's no doubt that Thailand's a powerhouse within golf. Uh, and they will lose players to the professional yeah. ranks. Mm -hmm. uh, but we seem to be very good at refreshing and renewing. So it, I thought it was a fantastic result, you know, 65 final round. Uh, to hold your nerve there, fantastic. Nice. Um, we've come to the final sport, which is aquatics, which comprises diving, water polo and swimming. In diving two years ago in KL, we won 12 medals, including one gold. Uh, two years later, our divers came back with only one silver and two bronze medals. Whereas swimming garnered 37 medals, of which 23 were gold. 
uh, in water polo. The unbeaten gold medal streak in the men's division from 1965 ended in dramatic fashion as we settled for the bronze. The women took silver. Uh, so, Richard, first off, did we, as in we, did we know that our regional opponents like Indonesia and the Philippines were improving their water polo squads with every SEA Games campaign and could we have prevented that loss to Indonesia about two weeks ago? Okay, um, first of all, I think at some stage we were going to lose uh, the, the, the yeah. record. I mean, tremendous legacy. Uh, and More than I'm, 50 years. I'm, I'm amazed that it's continued uh, to this point. Did we know that Indonesia were going to be a, a, a tough nut to crack? Yes, we did. Because we drew against Indonesia at the last SEA Games mm. in 2017. Mm. Uh, and they put up a hell of a fight. Uh, as they did this time round and they beat us. Uh, we didn't quite anticipate uh, Philippines drawing with us. Uh, and I think that helped us to push us to a bronze medal rather than a silver medal. Yeah. Um, the, the, the legacy creates uh, a certain... Uh, environment around us uh, and which I don't think in a number of years has necessarily been too healthy uh, we've gone through a large number of players you know we're reaching further and further down for younger players who incidentally they quitted themselves very well this time around mm. um, and I think we were kind of uh, worrying about fear of failure uh, that's been removed from us now we start the legacy again mm. so we're looking keenly at how they respond uh, that's going to be the challenge. How are they going to respond from this? Uh, interestingly, they had a pre-games tournament, which they won. Uh, so clearly, they, they weren't wide of the mark. It's just on this occasion, I think uh, the, the, the games got to them. And they lost out. It was going to happen at some stage. Uh, it's just happened at this games. Now we want to see how they respond to that. Sure. Then we go back to the diving. Diving's interesting because uh, Malaysia's a powerhouse. Mm. And so at the last SEA Games, they packed the, uh, the, the diving program, I think with 13 events. I think they won, in the end, they won 12 of the 13 events. Mm. Uh, they lost out on the other event through a doping violation, uh, which allowed Singapore, we were in the right place at the right time to sweep that gold medal. And uh, we've never previously won a gold medal. Mm. Uh, the diving program was greatly reduced this time. Uh, interestingly, uh, in 2019, it didn't include synchronized swimming or artistic swimming as it is now, uh, where Singapore all but swept the, swept the boards mm. uh, and we have particular strength in synchronized swimming. The one program that's remained stable through the last SEA Games mm -hmm. has been swimming. swimming. Yep. And I thought the swimming team did a fantastic result. Uh, I think they've performed um, above our expectations, uh, although our expectations are super high uh, <laughs> because of the last two C games, yes. you know, in home games and then in Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, but I think they surpassed even that uh, with the total medals and the, the gold medals that they won. What's even more pleasing is that youngsters are coming through. Uh, the statistic that I saw is that in 2015, when they did their best, uh, there were two male and four female mm. that were our main gold medal winners. Mm. This time around, there were six male and six female that won our gold medals. The strength in depth has improved. Mm. Uh, the challenge is how we're going to keep it going. Mm. You know, how can we keep renewing? Because there will have to be some renewal mm. as we go through. Mm. Um, I'd highlight um, two swimmers in particular, actually three swimmers. Uh, the first one, Amanda Lim, yeah. who actually started this year producing PBs since 2009. Uh, forever young, fantastic mm. to defend six, Six. Along with Peter Gilchrist, yeah. uh, in swimming, which is a very physical sport, that's a huge achievement. Yeah. Especially in the Glen event, the 50 meters freestyle. Oh. And, yeah. and she, you know, she went in not being the fastest, uh, but she went in, she was the first that surfaced. Her little arms and legs were flaying, but she got down to the end fastest. Mm. And I congratulate her for that. Mm. Uh, Darren Chua, uh, who has really popped up fairly new, you know, in swimming circles, he's been around for a little while. Uh, I thought he had a tremendous games. Mm. Super, super story behind Darren. Mm. Uh, he hasn't had it easy. Uh, on the education front, he's made some pretty hard choices for him, uh, which have started to come to fruition. Uh, he also went in for an operation. He was, having, he was struggling sleeping, and he was operating on you know, three to four hours a night of sleep, mm. which is not enough for your body to renew. Mm and to refresh and uh, he had a problem he went in had an operation 
and they got that sorted and that's tremendous. Uh, the third one that I'd highlight, of course, was our, um, our MVP of yeah. the Games. Significantly, you know, of the top five um, medal winning, top five top medal winning mm. performances, four of the top five came from Singapore. Yeah. Quantum Win. Yeah, mm. Quantum Win did a fantastic job, male uh, athlete of the Games, uh, along with Vien from, uh, from Vietnam. Uh, who was a female athlete at the games, but we backed it up. There was a further three Singaporeans in the mm. top five mm. uh, who were the most bemedaled athletes at the games, and they were all swimmers. And so I think it's testament to that program, which uh, produced a fantastic result. Now we're looking for, uh, they came back off the Asian Games, they were the third best nation. It was dominated by China and Japan, mm. uh, third best nation at the Asian Games. Uh, can we push on even further? Mm. And what can we do at the world level, at Olympic level? Mm. Before Buni, before I ask you about Joseph Schooling, so in light of our swimmers' successful haul at every SEA Games, should the Singapore Swimming Association still continue to focus a great deal on the swimmers or at the expense of perhaps the water polo or diving disciplines? I would not agree that it's done at the expense of them. I think Swimming Association uh, is very clear that they have to um, pay attention to all four disciplines. Mm. Um, Including synchronized swimming. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. right. Synchronized water polo and yeah. uh, diving. diving. Um, and I, and they, they have, they have uh, plans on uh, continued development for each, each of all, uh, all these uh, four almost very different sports mm. right, within, a, within the same association. Mm. Uh, so I, I think we are, we are in good hands uh, and we partner very closely with uh, SSA. Uh, to, to help them uh, work this through. Every, every of the discipline is different. Uh, I think the, the issues confronting how to improve swimming uh, is quite different from how what we need to do for water polo or, or artistic swimming or mm. diving. Mm. Um, but I think uh, we've got strong leaders over there who, who are um, uh, focused on what they need to do. Okay. So even at the SEA Games, there were a couple of gold medals that they missed. One of them, Sen Wen, slipped at the start in right. a 50 backstroke, mm. and I would have had him down for a gold medal. Okay. Right? So that sport. It happens. That sport, it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But they produced a fantastic overall performance. Mm. What about Joseph Schooling? Mm. Who's back home with uh, four gold medals, that's inclusive of three in the relays. He says he did put on a bit of extra weight after the World Champs in August. Do you feel that move? has worked in his favour at the SEA Games, especially with eight months now to the Tokyo Olympic Games. I think his size are set on the um, Olympics, now that you know, he has uh, booked his slot yep. in, in Tokyo. Mm. And uh, he's got the, the months leading up to, to Tokyo to uh, get to his peak. Mm. Uh, I think we should trust that he knows, uh, he's been there, he's done that, mm. and he knows what needs to be done. Um, of course, it's not just him, there's a team around the team, uh, the coaches, the sports scientists, mm. everyone uh, who's uh, with him, I think, in, on, on this journey. I think uh, let's, let's uh, continue to uh, lend him those support mm. right, and, and trust that he knows what needs to be done. Okay, so Singapore's overall medal tally at, at the 30th SEA Games stands at 53 gold, 46 silver, 68 bronze medals. And 51 out of the 167 medals were achieved by Games debutants. Is that a number which is considered satisfactory, exemplary, Buni? Of course. Um, I gave the, earlier on, I, I said that all oh, the 530 events, mm. half of them uh, do not quite have, uh, might not feature again in some uh, higher mm. level games or in the next SEA Games. Mm. And uh, so for us, in, in, in when we do our job, you know, we, we look at how uh, we invest in the sport in the long run, in the long term. And so whether there's a pathway for at a higher level or at a consistent feature in, at SEA Games level uh, is, an, is an important factor. And of our gold and silver medals, if you look at it, 80% mm. uh, of our gold and silver medals uh, are in sport and events that have got those uh, pathways. So I think we are, we are in a good state. Uh, we are happy that we are where, where it is. Um, it has, SEA Games 2019 has given us a useful checkpoint and we have always used SEA Games as a checkpoint yeah. in our longer term development. Mm. Good that it happens every two years, you know, um, it's, give us an, it's frequent enough for us to, to, yeah. to tweak our multi-year plans with our, 
our National Sport, Sports Association. Yeah. Um, so overall, uh, pleased with the outing. Um, we know what needs to be done, where we need to work better, mm. where we need to improve. Mm. Uh, we also know where our strengths are and where we need to ensure that we continue to, to maintain those strengths. Just one last one regarding medals. What about finishing sixth on the overall medal standings together with the other countries? Uh, I'm assuming this is not what we envisioned at the start of the Games considering Singapore finished second in 2015 and fourth place two years ago in Malaysia. Well, in the light of what I just said, uh, actually the, the overall medal tally standing is not something that we focus on. Um, actually, if you if you look at uh, on a per capita basis, we're probably rank on top. Yes, right? yeah. based on total yeah. number of medals over the population. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We don't really have a five point five six million population. We only have three and a half million citizens mm. who can who we can draw draw mm. on for for representation. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I think we're we're very happy. Um, but this is done. We are looking forward to the next. That's right. The next chapter. The next decade Richard mm. uh, as we are at the tail end of the show what are your parting words on Team, Singapore, Team Singapore's performance, performance at the 30th Sea Games I thought it was a very credible performance mm. um, as Bruni has mentioned uh, as a benchmarking opportunity it's helped us to identify where we already know what our strengths are where some of our weaknesses lie what we've got to work on for the future um, but I think it leaves us in a, a very positive position but we don't stand still. High performance sport doesn't stand still. We've got to keep moving forward. We've got to try and make further improvements to our systems. Um, there's no doubt that we can. Uh, we've got to make sure that we get a better return for the investments that we're making. Uh, not just in terms of medals, but in terms of uh, where the systems start performing, where they underperform, and the stories that our athletes bring back. Mm. I thought this games was a particularly good games for the unearthing some of the stories. I always say that the medals shine a light mm. on the stories that are already there. And I thought there were some tremendous stories that came out. And for that, I'm very grateful. And Buni, what do you take away from this particular campaign in the Philippines? Well, pride, performance, perseverance, um, lots of celebration of the Singapore spirit. Mm. Um, and our, our athletes uh, are our uh, representatives on this competitive field. Most of us, do not have that chance to do this ourselves. Mm. We, we play the supporting role, we play our, di our different roles, whether you're a supporter, whether you're a sports scientist, whether you're a high performance manager like us, um, but it's the athlete who are putting in the sacrifices, the coaches who, who work closely with them, their parents, their family who support them. So let's, let's continue to, do, to, to, to work with them and uh, back them up. Uh, being, just being at the games is a win in itself already. Mm. So, at the end of the day, the, the medals is, is an icing on top of the cake, but um, I think the, the, the journey that all our athletes walk, walk exemplifies that Singapore spirit. And we punching above our weight, right, no matter how you want to look at it, right, is, is testimony of uh, our re, uh, very good return on the investment of public resources. Mm -hmm. Tobun Yi, Chief of Singapore Sports Institute, Richard Gordon, Head of High Performance and Athlete Life, at SSI, thank you very much for coming on board uh, SG Sports Uncut. This, of course, is Singapore's only SEA Games uh, review show. And, you know, thank you for sharing your thoughts over the last uh, one hour at least. Uh, we hope, you know, our audience and the athletes and NSAs watching will take away some great insights from uh, what, 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 what was discussed in this show. Thank you very much. We hope for the best from 2020 onwards. You just heard from our special guest from the Singapore Sports Institute. And let's hope for the best from our Team Singapore athletes from 2020 onwards. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank our Singapore athletes and coaches who spoke to our SG Sports TV teams while we were covering the SEA Games in the Philippines. Well, if you have any comments or feedback on this show, feel free to drop us an email at sgsportsuncut at gmail.com. Till the next time, I'm Raj Kumar. Bye for now.